Hello CCH, how's it going? Ike Sheehan here. Um, I'm having a great summer. I don't know about you guys, but it, it's been really good so far. I'll tell you just a little bit about it. Uh, I went to the Indy 500. That's probably been the highlight so far. Uh, I went with my friend Taylor Swymeller. Shout out. He knew all the things to do at the Indy 500 because he's been a couple times. So if you're going to go, just take Taylor with you. He knows exactly what he's doing. It was, it was fantastic. Um, I've gotten to see my family this summer. Uh, I live up here in Angola, but my home is in Rushville, Indiana. So that's where a lot of my family is. And unfortunately, I don't make it home uh, as much as I want to because it's three hours away. Uh, but this summer has been good for that. I've been I've been able to go home quite a bit and see family and spend time with them. So it's been really good. Um, and actually, I've been really busy here at work. So it's been a good summer so far. Um, Kaylee and Ben, uh, in their devotions, uh, they just touched on the idea of forgiveness. I want to talk about that more in depth with the Proverbs that I was assigned. I was assigned to Proverbs 14 and 15. And so I'm going to speak specifically on the subject of forgiveness and kind of weave in uh, that into the uh, the Proverbs that I was assigned. So Proverbs 14, 9 says, Fools mock at the making of amends for sin, but goodwill is found among the upright. And so it says, Fools mock the idea of making amends at all. It's not easy to forgive. And we actually see this today in cancel culture. Uh, when people do one thing wrong and they uh, completely get uh, blown off the face of the internet just because of that one thing, there's no forgiveness. Um, and this should be expected from the world, but not from Christians. When we pray as Jesus prayed uh, in the Lord's Prayer, he says, uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. If you've never forgiven anyone for the trespasses they've committed against you, what do you think God's going to do? Uh, the sins that you've committed against God are way worse than anyone uh, has done to you. Forgive others. Uh, and, the, and the second half of that even says goodwill is found among the upright. We should even have a goodwill toward our fellow man. Actually, in 1 Corinthians 6 uh, it, Paul says, we as Christians, we don't take revenge and we don't try to get back even with people when they've done wrong to us. In fact, he says, why not rather be wronged than take a fellow believer, especially to court, especially in the sight of unbelievers who are going to see that? Jesus said that uh, the, the best thing for uh, Christians is testimony to uh, behold the glory of God is for us to be unified. That's how we're going to bring God the most glory so that people might believe in Christ, is to be unified. We have to forgive. And this takes a level of honesty, and it takes us being willing to give the gift of grace. And you know what grace means? It means giving a good thing to people that don't deserve it. And we see that in God as he gives us Jesus Christ uh, to forgive our sins. Anyway, back to Proverbs 14.10, just the verse after that says, Each heart knows its own bitterness, and no one else can share its joy. That's kind of an odd verse, but it really just touches on uh, the uniqueness of our feelings. No one else knows exactly how you feel. We don't know the state of other people. And so you don't know the intentions of someone who wronged you. Uh, th that person that you need to forgive, you don't need to be quick to condemn them. You need to be quick to listen and to forgive them. Be empathetic. And so in Proverbs 14.30, it says, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. If you don't forgive someone, that thing that they did to you is going to live in your head rent-free. You will receive no rest, no peace. Your bones will just rot. Be at peace. Um, have a heart of peace so that it gives you life. 
when you move on from that dark place of anger and wrath that you might be hiding in. Um, so moving on to kind of, if you confront this person that you need to forgive, um, here's some things that you should think about in that interaction with that person. It's Proverbs 15 verses 1, 23, and 28. Verse 1 goes like this, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. If you are gentle and tender in your interaction with that person, your forgiveness is going to go much better and that whole interaction is going to go much better. Uh, verse 23, a person finds joy in giving an apt reply. How good is a timely word? Know when to speak. Your word should be timely. Ecclesiastes 3 says there's a time to speak and a time to be silent. There's a time for everything. Um, let the Spirit guide you as you're uh, wrestling through that process of forgiveness uh, to know when to speak and what to say. And finally, verse 28 says, The heart of the righteous weighs its answers, but the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. You almost get a sense uh, of chaos, uncontrollable evil coming out of the, the mouth of the wicked. But the heart of the righteous weighs its answers before it gives an answer for uh, whatever it's being faced with. So think about those things when you're forgiving people. I want to move on to Psalm 73. I'm not going to talk about Psalm 80, uh, just because I really want to talk about Psalm 73. So Asaph, the author of this psalm, says in verse 2, his feet almost slipped. He had nearly lost his foothold. And so there's this tension building where I'm, I'm naturally asking, well, what happened? Like, like what's going on in his life? What, what's causing this? And he says this, he answers, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And he goes on this rant. The wicked have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. And he continues, from their callous hearts come iniquity. Their evil imaginations have no limit. I can hear Asaph's frustration as he finishes this big, long observation of these good things that are happening to the wicked when he says this, this is what the wicked are like, always free of care. They go on amassing wealth. Why are these good things happening to these bad people? And this question can be asked today. This question doesn't go away. And it demands an answer from Christians. This is where we need to go back to Proverbs 14.30. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Don't envy the wicked. Don't envy anyone for that matter. Uh, in the last chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus actually tells Peter that Peter is going to end up being crucified. Um, and then Peter, probably distraught from what his Savior just told him, Peter answers, well, what about the disciple John? What, what's going to happen to him? And Jesus says, what is that to you? Maybe I want him to live forever. What, what does that matter to you? That's none of your business. It doesn't matter to you what the rest of John's earthly life entails. You go out and proclaim the kingdom of God. And so we as Christians shouldn't care about how luxurious this earthly life is for us. Paul says the sufferings of this world do not compare to the glory that is going to be revealed in us. Do you believe that? I mean, really? Or do you look at the people who are living evil lives and think to yourself, man, wouldn't it be nice to live like that? And uh, I have a story myself. I actually recently was in the presence of wicked people, um, sexually immoral, drunkards, um, just really had no regard for the Lord. Uh, but man, did they have fun everywhere they went. And after being in their presence and hearing about the lives they live and the carefree nature 
uh, that they had. I couldn't help but just uh, the sinful desire in, in the, the, the flesh uh, that, that I'm trapped in screamed out to me, wouldn't it be nice to live like that? Carefree, um, just, I couldn't believe that I was asking myself that. And I hear Asaph, the author, uh, when he goes on to say this, this answers the question, wouldn't it be nice to live like that? Asaph says, when I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply till I entered the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their final destiny. <laughs> so in 1 Corinthians 6 and Galatians 5, um, Paul gives these lists of things that keep someone from inheriting the kingdom of God. And Asaph, in this psalm, he goes on to say that the wicked, these people that he almost envied, end up being destroyed. They do not inherit the kingdom of God. And so Asaph preaches, listen to this, Earth has nothing that I desire besides you, Lord. God is my portion. He is enough. He's all I need. That's incredible. Um, we need to read that when we see the prosperity of the wicked. We don't need uh, earthly prosperity. Now, granted, God is for us, um, and he delights in his children. Uh, but we should not get caught up in earthly riches and prosperity because the Lord is our portion. Amen. Praise God. Um, we have Jesus, and that, that's all we need. Believe in him and repent of your sins, everybody. Uh, that's all I've got. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Sign up for the summer retreat. Um, yeah, continue to have a great summer. It's been great seeing you guys. I'll see you guys later.